Friday, I uploaded a video that was a snippet from Book of Shadows, a story that focuses on Benedict and Akshani from Tall Tales Volume 2. That video was the first time on this TikTok account that I've acknowledged that Yggdrasil is not just a world tree in the Tall Tales canon, but an actual character. And so it's interesting that that's who I rolled for today's character introduction. So within Tall Tales, Yggdrasil is the name for a few different things. One is the world tree itself. Uh, another is the kind of void space that the world tree sits in. And a third is this character who actually shows up in the story that I read on Friday. The name can be applied equally to any of them or all of them together, which in the story it kind of doesn't make clear uh, that that's a thing that's happening. But sometimes people are talking about the tree and sometimes people are talking about the realm and sometimes people are talking about the character. And you just don't really have a whole lot of context clues to tell them apart, if I'm honest. The basic idea that I'm playing with is that Yggdrasil is a connection point. It's a hub. It's not just a world tree. It's not just a bridge between these various worlds. But it is a hub that sits at the center of the Norse concept of reality. And so, as such, it isn't just a place that bridges between realms, but it is a hub where knowledge is stored as well, where information on the world comes together, where all of this stuff comes together. And in that way, it kind of resembles the crossroads that it comes up with Hecate, except that it isn't designed to be just a place where all the roads meet, but as a central hub that everything connects to. As such, one of the functions of Yggdrasil within Tall Tales is that information gathers here and that people will go to Yggdrasil seeking information, especially if it's information that connects to one of the realms that Yggdrasil is known to connect to. So in that particular story, the Book of Shadows, the Book of Shadows itself is a, is a physical object. It's an actual book that contains all this information that Benedict wants for his investigation. And it has been sent to Yggdrasil to care for it, and so it's being kept there. But there's other information there as well that will come up because the characters visit Yggdrasil a few times throughout the course of Tall Tales. Now, the character itself, the, the being Yggdrasil that was talking to Benedict and Akshani in that clip, uh, is kind of of my own design. It borrows a bit from Mimir, which is this uh, water spirit or character that shows up in Norse mythology that hangs out at the well. Uh, but largely, it's fabricated from whole cloth. Essentially, I needed a way for the characters to be able to interact with Yggdrasil, and so I created a guardian for them to interact with. This guardian, I Yggdrasil, the character, is essentially a tree being. He, it looks like a large tree. It has a lot of limbs. It moves slowly. It, when it's just kind of standing there or hanging out at the base of the world tree, it looks more like a sapling of the world tree than an individual character. It's only when it starts getting up and moving around and interacting with the characters that it's distinguishable. The world tree itself, as I said, shares some similar concepts with the crossroads. And what that does is that kind of, one, gives Benedict a way to travel to a certain place at the end of the Book of Shadows, which he does. It presents the idea that while there's a lot of things that can be boiled down in the World Tall Tales, like for instance, Hecate is not just Hecate. Hecate is this one spirit that shows up multiple times throughout human history as Trivia. One of the characters suggests that even Hathor might be an aspect of who Hecate is, that the devil in the crossroads is an aspect of who Hecate is, that all these characters are the same character. And so there's one spirit that is the mistress of magic, the queen of the crossroads, who does all this stuff, who is the deity of liminal spaces. However, that's not strictly accurate because Yggdrasil is not the crossroads. And so there are ways in which all these various myths and things that tie together do have a shared root in the cosmology of Tall Tales, but there's also ways in which there isn't a singular root, that the center of this kind of Greek world and the center of this Norse world are actually distinct places from each other. And so they interact and they have certain similarities, but they're not the same. And so the world of Tall Tales is kind of designed to be constantly seeming a little bit smaller and a little bit larger than we would necessarily describe it within our own legends and lore and stuff like that. And this is all part of the bigger idea of Tall Tales, that magic and the spirit realm and everything like that is fundamentally 
unknowable on a full degree. That is, that the characters don't know to a full degree what's really going on out there. And as much as they're interacting with it, there's always something that's unknown. There's always something that they didn't piece together quite right. There's always something bigger at play. And that is a big part of how the cosmology of Tall Tales works. And so Yggdrasil, being this thing that can be described as, you know, the world tree, but also has this guardian that didn't really make it into myth, but kind of might have made it into myth in the form of Amir. And then there's these other ideas, and then the role of the world tree and the crossroads play that seems like they would be the same thing, but they aren't actually the same thing. These things all play into that larger cosmology and how it all works and how it all remains a little bit unknown to the characters. Anyway, you can read more about Yggdrasil and the characters that visit them here at talltalesuf.com. Enjoy.